The DaVinci Resolve 20 Beta is out right now, available to download, and guess what? Not everything is about AI. So in this video, let me show you the very best non-AI features in Resolve 20 that are blowing my mind. Keyframe editor on the edit page. Do you ever do simple zooms like this in your timeline and you wish you could refine it, but you don't want to go into Fusion? Well, in the upper left now, click the keyframe button and we have a dedicated window here to work with this to change the timing if you needed to. If you want to change the easing so that it doesn't start and stop so abruptly, click this button here, you get access to the curves where you can select them, change it to an easy ease by clicking that button right there. You have Bezier handle control. And they even went a little further with this. There's a lot of refinement to this that's so good. You have a pop-out window, so you can see it nice and large if you need to really change some of the handles, as well as a whole new way to view your keyframes down in the timeline. And that's by hitting this right here, which is the keyframe tray button, which pops up this bottom uh, panel, this bottom window, so that you can see stuff in context. And basically, anytime your playhead is over a clip that has keyframes, you'll see them there and you can make changes. Vertical video viewers, yes, that's a thing now. If you edit with video that's 1080 by 1920, you can now click on the edit page, this button on the far right, and that will stretch your image top to bottom so you don't miss a thing when you're editing. Maybe your cropping's a little bit weird. And it works on the color page too. That's what it looks like over here. Not a huge fan of vertical video, but I am glad that I can see everything nice and big now. Open in timeline with source viewer. This is probably my favorite feature of DaVinci Resolve 20, so let's get it out of the way. It takes a little bit of explaining if you've never done this before. The idea is I have a creative timeline here, one that's gonna be my final output video, and it shows up on my right viewer. But if I wanna see something on my left viewer that's maybe my source material, but maybe like a whole timeline of all my favorite shots together, this is how that works. So I built pre-built this uh, canoe select string out. And if you double click it normally, it just loads it as a regular timeline on the right side. But if I wanna load it as a source instead, first what I'm gonna do is double click my creative timeline. So that's open, ready to go. I'm gonna right click on the selects timeline and say open in timeline with source viewer. And that gives me a blue playhead. This blue indicates this is staying on the left side. It's a source material. And I can easily edit from the source material to the creative edit your cut on the right side. So just find a shot you like on here. Maybe I'll choose um, this uh, serving some food at campsite right here. I'll hit X for X marks the spot. And then all your other keyboard shortcuts to swap from source to the edit timeline work like Q. Q is your toggle between your source and your timeline. And you can see we have a clear indication that our red or orange is our record side and our blue is our source. So I wanna go back over here now that I have an area marked and maybe I wanna stick it right here on my timeline. I'll hit F9 to insert. And you can easily go through and pull your favorite shots from one timeline to the other, toggling Q, and you see everything nice and big. I'll tell you where open timeline and source fear really knocks that out of the park is if you have really long clips and you need to find that specific moment and you need to zoom in to see it in the viewer, well, that's where this can really help. So load a long clip. This one right here is like 42 minutes. And if I wanna see it down in the timeline, there's a button right up here. This is new. Click this, it goes blue. It's kind of that read only side of the timeline. And it, because it's a timeline, it acts kind of like a timeline. I can zoom in with Command Plus, find a moment really easily, my search dial, marking in, marking out. Maybe that's the only part I needed. Q to go to my edit timeline, append. And we've got this really specific moment we were able to find in a really, really long 42 minute clip. Compound Clip's got a nice workflow improvement. Now, if you right click on it and you say open in timeline, the playhead from the sequence that it came from matches when you open the clip. So it's easy to go make adjustments if you need to change something and not get lost on where was that inside that compound clip from the original sequence, the playhead matches exactly. Voiceover recording right here on the edit page is really easy to do with a brand new voiceover recording tool. Click that button give it a name, maybe call it voiceover, maybe be more specific, I'll call this one canoe. And you've got options for your microphone input. In fact, you've got some other stuff here like enable three second countdown so you can get yourself ready, as well as muting the timelines because maybe you don't want to have the feedback coming through on your microphone. So I've got a little script off to the side, I'll show you how it works. I push the record button, three, two, one, this is the trip of six lifelong friends that met up in Minnesota to paddle some of the most pristine lakes in the world. Stop it, and then I can come down here, I'll close that up. It made a file, it put it in my bin for me automatically. Maybe I increase the gain a little bit. We'll take a listen. This is the trip of six lifelong friends that met up in Minnesota to paddle some of the most pristine lakes in the world. 
and that's all there is to it. And if you want to actually see the script over the footage as it's playing on the cut page, we have this button down here for the script menu. You can say load a script file, load the script into there. Let's say Boundary Waters script. And you see it puts it right over the top. We could record from this page just as easily. This is the trip of six lifelong friends that met up in Minnesota to paddle some of the most, most pristine lakes in the world. And so really this is just amazing because whether you're a Fairlight master or you work in the cut page or edit page exclusively, you can record your creative voiceover ideas directly into DaVinci Resolve 20. Text Plus is revamped. It now supports paragraphs, so I can take a bounding box and size it however I want. That's found over here in the layout tab of the inspector for text box and wrap text box, but they didn't stop there. They actually invented a brand new text tool for DaVinci Resolve 20, and that's found in your effects, titles, and you'll find it right there, multi-text. What's special about multi-text is it supports layers. So you could have different layers of text in there, which can be really handy. Uh, maybe you want to format some of them so they're rounded like a circle. I probably wouldn't do that, but you could. Probably the most common use case I'm going to use the multi-text tool for is for setting legal like this right here. I have this set to the paragraph so I can figure out how is this going to fit into um, you know, the, the legal safe bounds of the title safe area. Along with the improved text tools is now you can filter your fonts out easily so you don't have to see a giant list of every single font that's installed on your system. So if you take a look over here, I just have Archivo and Open Sans and Helvetica New, so I don't have to search through a whole bunch of stuff I'm never gonna use in DaVinci Resolve. That is accessed and built, if you go up to your preferences, the user, editing, there's a new section down here for text, where it says display only specific fonts. What you do is you build out a text file that looks something like this. It just basically says, these are the fonts Resolve is allowed to use, and you can use asterisks if you wanna get an entire font family. Split PSD Photoshop layers in place directly on the timeline as if you just brought it in like any other clip into your media pool. The way you do it is you right click, you go up to split PSD layers in place, and it just builds your stack up from what was available in there. So if you need to turn them off, D disables, and you can work with them all independently like so. Fusion Vector Warp Smart Vectors. Now this is great for cleanup tasks on a flowy sort of soft fabric or skin. You can see the back of this hoodie here. It kind of crinkles as he turns around and I want to get rid of that number. Using the Fusion Smart Vectors, this new vector warp tool, it's really easy to do. Let's take a look at Fusion just for a couple seconds. I'll show you how that setup would look. A simple setup if you want to start using Smart Vectors today is my media in here has vector data in it. I baked it out after an optical flow node to an EXR sequence. Now the first vector warp is going to do like a stabilization so that I can paint on a stabilized version of it. So with this vector warp, you'll see the operation is called unwarp. That stabilizes it and stabilizes it based off of a frame that you set. After that, it's just simple paint cleanup task. I have lots of tutorials of that on the channel. Painted it, I cut it out with a little patch. This brightness contrast is just there to say, I can say multiply by mask and then I'll patch that over the top of it with one more vector warp tool. And this one is set to generate warp and map. But if you wanna learn more about paint cleanup with Smart Vectors, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm sure I'll do a complete tutorial on this. The Resolve FX Warper tool has been upgraded to include a spline only control. So if you take a look, warp mode, it's not just points anymore. Now we have curves. And for someone like me that likes to work in Fusion a lot, this is a great way to do easy beauty cleanup. Like I gave this guy over here that has no hat on, I don't know who he is, I gave him a little bit of a nose job by Placing a spline on the inside on a stabilized version. We'll see what it looked like before. Command P on and off. And I could just, you know, tuck that in a little bit more if I need to look a little bit prettier for my uh, for my glamour shots. Uh, we have all the tracking tools in Fusion, so it's a great way to, uh, to do stuff without having to go out to some external app for visual effects. Do it right here in the box. Quick Export works with user presets now. So I can just click this button right here and you'll see I've got my Creative Video Tips YouTube Asus render presets ready to go. Just by clicking one button, it's gonna ask me where I wanna place those. They're easy to set up. You just do that one time in the deliver page, create your presets like you normally would. And then as soon as you've done that, let's say I have found my CVT YouTube preset, come up here, you can come over and say edit preset name and icon and you have all these different pretty icons to choose from. Maybe I'll choose this one right here and make sure to check the box that says add to quick export. Now, when you go to the edit page, quick export, it's there. Hey, welcome if you're new to Creative Video Tips. I'm Chadwick, I'm a commercial finishing artist and DaVinci Resolve master trainer based here in New York. I am so thankful for you and your creativity and your time. 
I have some other DaVinci Resolve 20 launch videos that you might enjoy since you watched till now. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.